Hey, welcome back. It's actually uh, been quite a while since my last video. Um, but I have a new project, and I thought that it was complex enough that uh, I'd share some of my experience uh, in putting together the Nemesis Dread Knight. It's, it's really an interesting piece. Uh, as you can see from the parts, there's a lot that goes into it. And I, I really had to make some kind of tough choices in terms of the best way to approach painting it. And as you can see, uh, I've, I've actually put it all together into little sub-assemblies uh, because there's just so much going on here. Uh, if you were to put together the entire thing and then try to paint it, you'd really be making a lot of work for yourself down the road. Uh, for example, uh, the legs here, if you were to put on the leg plates, which look like this, uh, they actually kind of free float over the leg, and so they'd be impossible to get underneath. So I've left those off. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, oh, there's the other one. Uh, I don't. I, I left them off so that I could get underneath with the paint and the primer, primer and the paint, uh, before I did final assembly. Um, interesting things to note, uh, they almost give you enough parts to do weapon swaps. Uh, not quite, and I'll show you what you're missing, because um, I've, I've decided I was going to magnetize everything. So, uh, for example, so this is the wrong arm. Where's the other arm? There's the other arm. So that magnetizes in there. Real straightforward, you got a magnet uh, on the wrist and a magnet on the arm. Put it together so that goes together like that. Same thing with the sword. Now the interesting thing to note here is that these two pieces, uh, they both have the same uh, hand piece here. Uh, these are broken into essentially two halves. The back half with the back of the hand and the front half with the fingers and thumb. They're the identical piece and they give you two of them. Uh, for the right hand. Unfortunately, there are three weapons that can go there, and the third is the Doom Fist, and so you don't have one. You're going to have to leave one off if you're just going to stick with the parts they give you. I opted to actually uh, sculpt the fingers and thumb on the Doom Fist, uh, honestly not knowing which one is going to be the most uh, popular of the variants, but I'm guessing hammer or sword is really going to be the way to go. Now, in terms of the other weapons, uh, now the incinerator is fixed. This is all uh, built and done, and you know it will mount to uh, either arm. It goes on like that, locks in here. I didn't even really magnetize this because uh, this little piece here uh, grips grips the arm, and so. It doesn't come off. You just got to be careful with that when you take it on and off that you don't break it, obviously. But that's all good. So the other weapon, uh, these weapons are actually built on a kind of a standard chassis. And uh, the only differences are the, uh, the barrel that you choose to put on it. And again, these are magnetized. So that one goes like that. And then there's a back piece, and this particular one uses this piece. And this actually does have a little magnet on it, just to snug it into place. And then that goes on the same way the incinerator does. And again, either arm. It can go on either arm. Then you have, uh, I think this is the silencer. Same thing. I've got a magnet right here goes on and then it has uh, this piece which is magnetized and then it has these other pieces these aren't even uh, primed yet actually I haven't even tested this yet so let's see if this works uh, I've got a magnet inside here now that still needs to be trimmed anyway I've got magnets uh, inside these side pieces and uh, once this is trimmed down that will magnetize to that and it should hold it in place. And the thing is, they give you two, uh, and it really matters which 
for which uh, arm you're going to mount it on. Uh, you know, you put it on one if it's going to be on the right, and the other if it's going to be on the left. And that actually still needs a little work. And then the Doom Fist, and this one, you know, that one's all good. Uh, went together just fine. Uh, the shoulder section actually has these movable parts here. And this is because when you're mounting the arms, the arms uh, have a little bit of play as to where you put them. And you'll have these other pieces uh, that go up over the back. Now I magnetize these uh, not because it's going to be movable or removable, but to help in positioning. And that's the same reason these are were left free by Games Workshop was because you're going to want to have some position ability uh, when it comes time to put this in. This piece locks into the arm there. So there is some freedom as to how you're going to you're going to be able to position this arm and because I I magnetize that piece uh, it's completely free to go where, where it wants to go and uh, all I have to do is decide how to do it. I can glue that in and then it's set. Uh, and then it doesn't really matter if that's a magnet there or not. Um, oh, that's there. So it looks like that. Um, yeah, so, you know, that was really just for, for ease of uh, positioning down the road. And I didn't put the... Uh, the pilot in. Uh, he's going to go, you know, front half, front half up here. He sits in there, and then his bottom half goes under here, and then the two pieces come together. And what's interesting about this is this actually has a little pivot to it, which is kind of nice. I like that. Um, I imagine you can glue it in place if you really want to. Um, I might just leave that, or I might throw a magnet in there. I don't know if it even really needs it, because it's not like it's going to fall off. Uh, let me see. In terms of difficulties, I didn't really have any with this one. Um, mostly in, in, in terms of choices. I mean, obviously, whenever you're deciding to make all the weapon swaps uh, possible, you got to figure out how to do that, and and luckily this more or less lends itself to doing it. The, this is the only, you know, these these pieces were the only tricky parts because it's such a small contact point. Once I file that in, it'll it'll go right in there. But uh, that did make it a little more challenging. Uh, you also have two head possibilities. Um, one of them is this little knight head and the other one is a bear head. I actually really love the helmeted knight head. My only uh, problem with it is that if you paint it like the rest of the model, if it's, for example, you know, you're doing a lot of silvers and you do the helmet silver, it's just going to get lost. You won't even see the pilot in there. But uh, what I decided to do was do the head in red. Um, Red is one of the accent colors they use in the Grey Knights, and so if that head is a really bright red, it's going to stand out. It'll be a, a sort of a central uh, focal point for the model when it's all put together. So you you be able your eye will key right into the, the fact that there's uh, something going on here, and that's pretty cool. I like that. Actually, this may need to get glued down. Well, I guess we'll see. Oh, that's fine. Anyway, so that is, I think that's it for now. Uh, it goes together pretty fast, all things considered. It's, a, like I said, complex kit. Uh, took a couple of sessions of sitting down and deciding how to do it. And obviously the, the magnetizing takes a little bit of work. But, you know, it's not too bad. As, as far as uh, doing weapon swaps go, this one's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, for example, on these hands... Uh, I just chopped off this connection point. I don't know if you can see that. There's a connection point right there. Chopped that off, drilled a 132nd scale, a 132nd scale, 132nd of an inch uh, hole. Uh, actually, 
no, that one was 16th, I think. Anyway, uh, drop the, that right size magnet in there, glued it down, all set, done. Um, and that was it. That's it. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, as I get to various stages of this and it makes sense, I will do uh, another video or two so that uh, I can relate you know, some of the other issues that I might have run into as I worked on this project. Uh, but that's it for now, and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.